Hey, how much do we spend on eating in a month? You never cared about the food expenses. Why the sudden interest? It came up when my colleagues and I were having small talk. So, how much? Depends on the month, but around $420. $420? That's too much! Make it less from this month. That's impossible. I'm already trying to manage it as I possibly can. My colleagues spend way less than us. Why can she do it and you can't? How should I know? Why don't you ask her how she's managing it and what she cooks for herself daily than I do as you say? Fine, I'll get the details. Follow them. All right. But still, why all of a sudden? Even if the subject was brought up, forcing me to cut costs, did someone put you up to it? We're thinking of having a second child, yes? Um, yeah. Maya will be off to school in a few. And she wants a brother or sister. Right, not only for her. Before we were married, we agreed on having kids. But with kids comes money, and we were short on savings. We've managed so far, and we have quite a large sum now. I've been saving where I can here now. You've been working hard for us too. But it's still not enough. What if something happens? If you say so. It's your job to manage the accounts, since you're not working. <laughs> Sarah, how much did you spend on food last month? Is it down to around $70? $70? No way! We brought it down to around $350. What? Only that much? Why? Why? I did everything just as your colleague said to. Well, mostly. There were some that were impossible to do. Isn't your job as a housewife to make all the impossible things possible? Easy for you to say. Every household is different. Sure, your colleague had some really good ideas. Like, make your own vegetables or buy groceries with coupons. But there are just things that can't be done. Like what? Like, get milk from your aunt's farm. Or, ask your fisherman cousin if there's some trout to spare. There's no way that would work out on us. We don't know anyone who's a farmer or a fisherman. You're from the rural areas. Can't you do something about it? But I didn't grow up near a farm or a port, so no. There were some family-owned gardens, and that's about it. Well, you're useless. How dare you call me useless? What about you? You grew up in a poor town. Don't you have any relations? I don't. Then we're both useless. Your colleagues had a lot of help from her family, according to the list she gave us. That's how she's managed to keep her food expenses low. Then how can we cut down with the expenses? How the hell should I know? Maybe if you stop drinking every night at home. You might make friends with some farmers or fishermen. I doubt they'll give us food, though. Right. Then you go make some friends. What? Well, I can't cut drinking out of my life. Do something about it. You know I can't. It's way more realistic for you to sober up. I work all day to support you. You're telling me to give up my only relaxation? You could find something else to get relaxed, or maybe considering to drink less, like weekends only. I would never give up my drinking. And if I were to, let's say, take away Maya's snacks also? What the hell? You're giving her way too much anyways. She's still only a kid. She doesn't need snacks. She'll grow up to be fat like you. <laughs> Girls are always attractive when they're skinny. Make her have a diet. I can't believe you're serious. 
For your information, Maya does not have her snacks every single day, and it's not even a lot. Even so, cut it down. Do you understand? I'm getting back to work. Wait, Tyler! How much was last month's food expense? You had some help from the neighbors, no? Should have gone down quite a sum. 210 last month. $210? Better than what we started with, I guess. Down by half. But you can cut out more, can you? The aim is $70 a month. The hell? There's no way I can cut down anymore. Why are you giving up? My colleague was able to do it. The neighbors helped us out of sympathy. They were sorry for Maya having to survive with no snacks. I can't go around begging for food every month. That's too pathetic. Neighbors are supposed to help each other out. Tell them that and they will. <laughs> then we need to give back the favor for helping us out last month. What? Do they need our help with something? Uh, not that I heard of. Then you don't need to give them anything back. You only need to help your neighbors when they're in need. That's not how it works. You don't know because you're out working all day. I work my ass off for you! Isn't that not enough? Just because I'm a housewife doesn't mean I only do house chores. You never take care of our kid, so I'm bringing up Maya alone. And getting along with the neighbors isn't that easy. Getting along with one of the neighbors is one of your chores. I also have to put on a good face with Maya's friend's mom. One foot out of the line has its costs. Who knows what will happen to Maya then? Have you ever thought about her future? I work to support you and Maya. I give up my weekends for family time. What more do you want from me? What do you mean by giving up your weekend? Don't you see that mindset alone is wrong? Don't you want to be involved with your own child's life? She's the one who doesn't want me involved. She wants her mother. Of course she'll be attached to me. I take care of her every day. You only talk to her when you feel like it. Her rejection is no wonder. Try talking to her persistently. She'll warm up to you. Why am I the one that has to try? I keep the roof over her head. That's nothing to be proud of. It's the parent's duty to bring up a child. Shut up! Make do with 70 this month. If you can't, go around the neighbors for help. How much was the expenses last month? $280. 280? Why has it gone up? Because last month was summer break and Maya didn't have kindergarten. She had to eat lunch at home. And I can't exactly beg for food around the neighborhood anymore. I did my best to get discounted foods in the local market, but... Didn't your mother send us some food? What happened to that? We ate it all! Why didn't you ask for more? I told you, I haven't got the nerve to do that. They're your parents. It's their job to provide their children. They expect children to be selfish. <laughs> then why don't you ask your parents? By the way, your parents didn't give a thought when I told them about your obsession with cutting food expenses. Are you bumming my parents? The fuck? You expected me to bum my parents or the neighbors. Don't be cheeky with me. Fine then. This month's food budget is $7. Work with that. <laughs> so you're fine with eating bean sprouts every day? Huh? You heard me. Um, yeah. I'm okay with steak and bean sprouts. The hell? Who said anything about steaks? What? I said bean sprouts only. We still have some seasoning left. But if I use that up, there'll be no options other than boiling. <laughs> You're kidding, right? You don't go grocery shopping, so you wouldn't know this. But buying some fresh veggies and meat can easily use up 
but bean sprouts are a bit cheaper than most vegetables, so we can manage for a few days. Are you seriously going to serve bean sprouts without steak? Yes, I am. A bag of bean sprouts is about 14 cents. We can go 50 for $7 a month and split it between the three of us. 50 bags for three. Okay. That might sound a lot, but there's 30 days to this month. So we can use up to 1.6 bags a day. Split it to three times a day and sustain three people. Here's the question. How many sprouts can one person eat a day? Sprouts? Is my portion going to be that small? There will be days when I have to pack Maya's lunch. You'll be eating bean sprouts that I packed for you this month as well. What? Can I eat at the cafeteria or at restaurants? Hell no. Your lunch money also came from our food expenses. Oh, and I have to tell the kindergarten beforehand that we're to be sustained only on bean sprouts this month because of my husband, lol. Um, okay. I'm sorry. Please don't make me eat only bean sprouts for a month. That's alright by me. You never do housework or spend time with your child. Don't you ever tell me what to do in this house. Understood? Tyler, what the hell did you tell your mother? She was so mad at me on the phone. I only told her about our conversation over lunch today. <laughs> You only told her the bits that were to your advantages, huh? Coward. Who are you calling a coward? I told her word for word. Oh, but she was surprised. How can you only serve your husband bean sprouts for lunch? It's the truth. <laughs> you didn't tell her that you were planning on a $7 food budget this month. And told me to beg around the neighborhood for food. Okay, maybe some details got left out. Well, I told her everything. What? Your mother hung up the phone so embarrassed. She didn't apologize. That was annoying. I guess apples don't fall from from the tree. What do you mean by everything? Mainly about your behavior. At first, she believed in her own son. But gradually, she caught on all the shitty things he's done, and then hung up so abruptly, lol. So basically you harassed her. Where did that come from? I only told her the facts. Going against both your husband and his mother in the process, that's why you're a failure as a wife. Like I care. Your ideals for a wife are too unrealistic to achieve, lol. What? Careful, or you would be eating bean sprouts every day. You wouldn't want that now, would you? You threatening me? You seem to act like you're superior to me. But that won't go long. What are you planning on doing now? I'm not letting you touch a hair on Maya's head. I'm not giving you any more money. From now on, I'll be managing the accounts. And how are you planning on doing that? You don't have any domestic experiences. If you can do it, so can I. I'll put it off. <laughs> From this month. For now, do with the money I'm giving you. And bean sprouts are not an option. Hey, Sarah. Where the hell are you? The lights are out in the house. You and Maya are gone. We're playing hide and seek, are we? Come out, come out, wherever you are. Maya and I, we're staying at my parents' house. And we're never going back to that house. What do you want about? You're happy as long as you have your daily alcohol. Not caring about our welfare. You knew I've been drinking? Since you started to manage the accounts, You've been out drinking a whole lot more. It doesn't take a genius to figure out what's going out, lol. Well, I put money to the house. I keep the roof over your heads. A little pint of beer won't hurt anybody. <laughs>
In fact, I have the right to be rewarded for my hard work. If only it were a little pint. You're strict on everybody else but yourself. What did you say? I am no longer in need your financial support. And what do you mean by that? I told you, we won't be going back to that house. Don't you get it? I'm leaving you! What? Are you serious? You can't divorce me. <laughs> Don't be full of yourself. Can't you find it yet? I left the signed divorce papers for you on the kitchen table. Huh? Oh my god. Are you really serious about this? That's what I've been telling you. Stop making me repeat myself. What are you going to do with Maya's kindergarten? You can't make her go there from your parents' house. It's too far. No worries. I already filled out and turned in the transfer papers. She'll be starting a new kindergarten next week. And she's okay with that? She can't just leave her peers. I'm so glad she's an extrovert. She was sad at first, but soon enough she got excited to meet new kids. No problem there, then. How about work, then? You can't bring her up without the money. Are you going to bum your parents? You hated the very idea. Oh, that? I'm going to be helping out my dad's bakery. He needed the help, and he's paying me for my time, of course. It's a win-win for the both of us, lol. No problem there, too. Yep. I'm not only divorcing you, I'm charging you for alimony and child support. Alimony and child support? Why should I? Alimony is for when there's an affair. Alimony can be charged in mentally abused situations as well. Mentally abused? I never abused either of you! You're thinking of straight-up violence. It's not. You won't give us money to live. E even if you did, it wasn't enough. There are reasons enough to charge. For that only? You seem surprised, but cutting expenses when knowing your family will suffer is a dick move. And while using money freely for yourself, how would you feel when that's forced upon you? Try and live with that little money. Could you do that? So you're saying a man can't manage his own money? I didn't say that. If you'd given us the right amount, there wouldn't be any complaints. Which in your case, didn't happen. Verifying from 7 to $70 a month. But you managed. I didn't. How could I? I had to take money from my savings account. And I had to take help from my parents. I was desperate to survive. There is no way I managed. I didn't know that. I've been telling you over and over. We couldn't survive with that little money. But you ignored me and went on spending for yourself. Um... This is why I can't do this anymore. Sign the divorce papers and get on with it, will you? Wait, Sarah, I just wanted for us to have a simpler life. For our future. For our family. Please understand, Sarah. You say stuff about family when you yourself wasn't bothered to take care of them. Do you even hear yourself? You've done basically nothing for us. Um... Because you're working, because you're paying for our expenses, so the housewife could do everything else? I can't live with a person who thinks like that. Fuck you. Try and live by with $7 a month. I blocked my husband's number after that and got a lawyer to talk with him. As a result, I successfully got the alimony money and child support. The divorce papers went through, so I'm a free person. According to our mutual friends, his company found out the reason of the divorce, so he's having a hard time at work being alone. He sold the house and moved in with his parents. The neighbors talk, of course, so his mother is stressed out on all the gossip. I don't know what will happen in his future, but for now, I have my daughter, my supportive parents, so I'm enjoying my life to the fullest.
Hey, Tamara, let's do something this weekend. Oh, hi, Ian. You don't have any work this weekend, do you? We haven't gone out on a date since last month. I really miss you. Don't worry about money either. I'll pay for everything. My treat. Ah, well, gee, Ian. That sure is a wonderful offer, and I would love to take you up on it. But unfortunately, a friend invited me to go on vacation this weekend, so yeah. What? A vacation? That's news to me. You haven't said anything about that until right now. Yeah, they just messaged me about an hour ago and invited me. Oh, well, okay. I hope you have fun, but... Man, that was really short notice about the vacation, huh? Your friend is lucky you were off from work. Someone else was planning to go along, but that person had something come up last minute. And since they already have the tickets and everything, I got invited instead. Ah, I see. So, yeah. I know you're my boyfriend and all, and I really appreciate the invitation, but since my friend talked to me first, I'm gonna go with them. Sorry, we'll hang out another time. Nah, don't be sorry. The thing is, though, there's something I've been wanting to talk to you about for a while. So, do you think we could meet up sometime before this weekend? We can meet up after you get out of work. Just let me know what your schedule is, and I'll make it work for me. Um, can't you just tell me by text? I mean, sure, I could, but it's something I'd rather talk to you about in person. Oh, okay. I'll let you know if it seems like I'll be able to fit you into my schedule. Thanks, Tamara. I'll talk to you later. Hey, Ian. Do you have a minute? Hey, Tamara. You want to talk about when we can meet up, right? I'm really looking forward to seeing you. Uh, kinda. I guess it's not totally unrelated. Well, to be more specific, I don't think I'll have any reason to meet up with you anymore. So I'll go ahead and say everything I have left to say to you right here. What? You almost sound like you're gonna break up with me. Well, the truth is, I'm pregnant with your brother's baby. What? My brother's baby? You mean my younger brother, Jordan? Well, duh. You don't have any brothers, do you? No, I guess I don't. Okay, then I'm not sure why you're so confused about it. Yeah, it's Jordan's baby. Are you out of your mind? Jordan's only 19. He's young enough to be your little brother. I mean, he is my little brother. I know, right? That's what makes it so awesome. Awesome? You mean awful? I mean, it's not like we were trying to get pregnant or anything, so that was kind of unplanned. But it just felt so good doing it with a young stud that I kept doing it over and over again. And, well, then I got pregnant. I would appreciate you holding back any unnecessary details about you sleeping with my little brother. Sorry, I just can't help myself. So yeah, like I was saying, even if I wasn't expecting to get pregnant, this means I get to marry your super hot younger brother. So I'm actually pretty happy about it. <laughs> Jordan loves me, and that's all that matters. So I don't care about his age or his relationship with you. When did this happen? How did this happen? Our house is like a three-hour drive from you. Are you kidding? You didn't know? Jordan enrolled in a college with a campus downtown. He's living on his own in an apartment just a little ways away from me. Wait, really? I never heard about that. Whoa, I guess Jordan and your parents weren't kidding. What? You've even met my parents? <laughs> yeah, isn't it great? You never once took me to your house or introduced me to your parents, did you? Yeah, and I've told you the reason for that a million times before now. My parents treated me like a red-headed stepchild. They gave Jordan everything he wanted and left me with nothing but scraps. You ever hear about hand-me-downs? Well, I got hand-me-ups. I was waiting all through high school for the day I'd finally graduate and be able to leave that family far, far behind me. I haven't gone back home a single time since that day I started college. That's why I never took you to meet them. 
I didn't want to see them, much less introduce my girlfriend to him. Yeah, I know. That's what you always told me. But I started to think, is it really fair to base my opinion of them on your one-sided version of the story? It seemed too unbelievable to be true. So about six months ago, I figured out what your address was and went to meet them by myself. You what? I found your home phone number in your phone's contact list. So I called them up and arranged for a time where I could meet them. Then I waited until a weekend when you were busy, drove up there by myself and introduced myself. I got there pretty late and it was a long drive back, so they told me I could stay the night. What the? It just so happened that Jordan was visiting his parents that weekend. And that night was the first time we were together. What is the matter with you? I told you time after time how awful they treated me. And after all that, you just go by yourself. And not just that, you... With my little brother. Yeah, and you know what I found out? They're not nearly as bad as you made them out to be. Well, I'm sure they put on the best act of their lives. And you know what else I found out? It was you who was the bad guy, not them. You gotta be kidding me. You broke into Jordan's room and stole the money he had saved up at his job during high school. You stole Jordan's girlfriends away from him. You never listened to anything to your parents told you. You were just a complete and total brat. I don't believe what I'm hearing. That's what Jordan did to me. He stole my money and my girlfriends. I was the one who worked hard to make something of myself. Look, Ian, it's your word against theirs. And all three of them told me the exact same story. So if you ask me, what they say is way more credible than what you say. It's three versus one, Ian. So logically, the only conclusion I can reach is that they're telling the truth and you're lying. It may be three versus one, but all three of them are lying. Huh, <laughs> whatever. So anyway... You remember me telling you I was going on vacation this weekend? Well, the truth is that I was actually going to your parents' house with Jordan so we could announce our pregnancy to them. You're a real piece of work. And since now, Jordan and I are having a baby together. There's no point in us staying together. You would only get in the way. So this is goodbye, Ian. I see. If you're pregnant, then yeah, I guess you're right. Huh, <laughs> obviously I'm right. Ah, I'm so happy that I can finally be together with Jordan. Well, if that's all you gotta say, then I guess we can end this right here. Goodbye, Tamara. So long, Ian. I'm gonna have a great life with Jordan. Just do me one last favor and give Jordan and my parents a message for me. I'm cutting them out of my life. I don't ever want to see or hear from any of them ever again. Good grief, Ian. Don't you think this is the perfect opportunity for you to reflect on your mistakes and reunite with your family? You're such a child. Reunite with them? I'd rather die. Whoa, I had no idea you were such a stubborn brat, Ian. I thought you were better than that. You can think whatever you want about me. I don't care anymore. Goodbye. Hmm. Ian, you've got to help me. Tamara, what the hell do you want? Don't talk to me like that. I'm in a major, major crisis over here. Not that I care. What's the problem? What do you mean was the problem? You, of all people, should know. Your mother is an absolute monster. She's treating me like a red-headed stepchild. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. This is serious. You have to help me. Nah, I think I'll pass. I tried to warn you, but you ignored me and dove headfirst into that family. If you want help, why don't you ask your darling husband, Jordan? Jordan's not at home. He has college classes to attend, so he's still going to be back in the city. Really? We did get legally married without a ceremony, since I was pregnant and all. But I couldn't just force Jordan to drop out of college to take care of me. That wouldn't be fair to him. 
so I quit my job and moved into your family's house so that your mom could help me out with the baby after the birth. But she isn't just helping. It's more like kidnapping. She took the baby away from me and won't let me see him. Your dad stares at me a bunch of the time. It's super unnerving. Jordan's the only one who I could talk to about all of this. But he's at college and never comes home. And the worst part is, I heard that he might be cheating on me with another girl at school. Wow, sounds like you're having a pretty rough time of things. That honestly doesn't surprise me in the least. Uh, actually, it would have surprised me if it didn't turn out like this. Oh, now you tell me. If you saw this coming, why didn't you tell me? If I had any idea this is what they really were, I never would have married into this family. What are you talking about? I did tell you. About everything. I told you that my mom was an overbearing queen bee. I told you that my dad was a lecherous creeper. I told you that Jordan thinks monogamy is a type of wood. But they seem so nice. The vile creature Jordan turned out to be is a direct product of being raised by my overbearing queen bee mother and lecherous creeper father. And I told you about all of this time after time. But you decided not to heed my warnings, met with my family behind my back. And after meeting them just one time, you immediately decided that I must be the one who was lying and they were actually all super nice people. But not just that, you slept with my younger brother the very night you met him. You knew everything that there was to know, and yet you decided to throw in your hat with them. I've already cut off all contact with them, and I don't consider them to be my family anymore. So nothing they do to you is my problem. How can you be so cold? I get it now. You were right. You were right all along, Ian. So please, can't we get back together? I'll be the best wife you could possibly dream of having. And what about your kid? I'll figure out some way to take him back from your mother and get out of here so we can raise him together. I'll let you be his dad. You'll let me, huh? Yeah, he's already your nephew, right? That's pretty close to being your son. And since he's the biological son of your beloved wife, I know you'll have no problem loving him like he was your own. We'll have a wonderful life together, just the three of us. No, never, not on your life. Just give it a chance. You'll come to like our life together, I know it. Life with a rusty nail being constantly driven into my brain would be preferable to life with you. You've got to do something. Will you at least come down here and take me away from here? All I need is a ride. Is that too much to ask? Yeah, it actually is. But why? Because I'm not in the country. You're not? Then where are you? Not in the country. I got transferred to an overseas branch for my company with a promise of a major promotion. I'm looking at getting my permanent residency visa as soon as possible. That's wonderful for you. But why didn't you tell me about that? I was trying to tell you about it right before you broke up with me, so... I never even had the chance. Oh, wait, now that I think about it, you were saying that you had something important that you wanted to talk to me about in person. Was that it? Yep. My company was talking about the possibility of the transfer at the time, and I told them that before I gave them a definitive answer, I wanted to talk to my girlfriend, you. And that's why I wanted you to set aside some time to talk to me in person. But then I found out that you'd betrayed me in the worst way imaginable, so I no longer needed your input. Whoa, so that's what's going on? If I had only talked with you openly back then, maybe I'd be over there right now, standing by your side. Are you kidding me? The very second I found out you were pregnant with Jordan's child, I'd have kicked you to the curb in an instant. Really? Yeah, really. Well then, now that all of that's all been said, I think it should be perfectly clear why I will never help you. I wouldn't even help you you if I was living across the street, much less across the globe. You're so cruel. Also, I'm going to get rid of this phone soon since I now have a plan with a local carrier over here. 
so there will no longer be any way for you to contact me ever again. Ian, please. So this is goodbye, Tamara. Forever. Ian, don't do this. Ian? I heard about what happened after that from my other relatives. My family found out that Tamara had contacted me and they took away her phone. Jordan came home to visit a short while later while on break from his classes. And since Tamara really could just not help herself, about a month after that, she found out she was pregnant with her second child. Pregnant again and unable to run away on her own, Tamara tried going to her parents for help. But it would seem that being easily fooled by bad actors runs in the family. Because when her parents met my parents, they had a grand old time and left reassured that their daughter was in good hands. And then, sometime later, it was Jordan's turn to cause trouble. He started stalking one of his female professors who spurned his advances, got criminally charged for it, sued, and kicked out of the school. The impact of this didn't just stop with Jordan. In order to pay off the lawsuit and his legal bills, my parents had to sell their house. That was barely enough to cover it, so... Left homeless and impoverished, they had no choice but to put their kids into foster care. I'd think that at this point, Tamara could just divorce Jordan and save herself a world of trouble. But for whatever reason, she doesn't seem to be making any efforts to do so. <laughs> <laughs>